Should you use social media to grow your coaching business? This is a question I get asked all the time. A lot of the coaches I work with are introverts or highly sensitive people, sometimes both. And there's a lot of hesitation around using social media. And I think this is pers very reasonable because the fact is, if you are sensitive to energy, when you put yourself onto social media, you are being exposed to a lot of energy, okay? And this can be exhausting. And social media just also opens us up to comparison. It's just the way it is. Um, a lot of times we're seeing other people's lives, other people's businesses. And for a lot of people, this just triggers a a wanting to compare ourselves to other people or just a tendency to do this. And this can be very tricky for people as well. Plus the other thing is that social media is also just when we get on it. I mean, it's, it's a tool, but when we get on it, it is designed to suck us in and keep us there. And so it can be a huge time and energy suck for a lot of people even when you're really trying to put things in place to protect you from that. And for anyone who is an introvert or highly sensitive, most likely you don't use social media a lot. Personally, um, you aren't someone who really wants to put your life out there. You don't openly share. That isn't just kind of something that happens and that you like doing and that you enjoy doing. Most of us are a little more private and don't always want to be putting ourselves out there, sharing everything about our lives. And so the idea of using social media can feel very foreign to us. Um, sometimes the clients that I work with don't even have social media or aren't using social media, have maybe decided not to use social media for various reasons. Sometimes it's even work related or related to the fact that you have kids and you don't want everyone to be seeing your kids on social media. There's a lot of different factors there. Okay. So I want to explain a little bit about this and when you're trying to make the decision of should you use social media? Um, I want you to reframe this question to do I want to use social media in my business? And I want to talk about some of the things that you want to take into account when you are making this decision. Okay. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background, I am Dr. Kristen Harches. I'm a former chiropractor and functional medicine practitioner turned health coach turned business coach. I've been helping other health coaches and health practitioners start online coaching businesses for the past decade. And in that decade, I have been running and marketing my own coaching business and social media has been a huge part of that. It has allowed me to connect with people all over the world. I have had international clients, which has been amazing, but I have seen the positives and the negatives of using social media. Um, and I think the biggest negative is how does it negatively impact our mental health, which is obviously a huge topic right now um, as social media becomes more and more common as we have pho phones and we're able to jump on social media at any moment and really use it i would say a lot of times unconsciously um, so once again i want to go back to the fact that social media is a tool and it can be used for good or it can be used in a way that is destructive same thing as food being a tool. Food is a tool. It's not good or bad. And it can be used in a way that is really positive and healing. And it can also be used in a way that is negative or destructive. Okay. So when it comes to social media, we need to, if we decide that we want to use it, we want to be very intentional about how we're using it and using it in a way that serves us. So the first thing that I want you to ask yourself, if you're trying to figure out if should I use social media in my business is do you want to use it and why? Because it isn't necessary. It isn't necessary to be on social media to build a successful business, but 
it is necessary to market your business in some way and to get visible and talk about your business. So if you aren't doing it on social media, which truly isn't a way to really typically is not a good way to build your audience, but it is a good way to build connections with your audience. So once again, social media alone is not a tool to, if you're just using social media, it isn't a good tool as far as building an audience and getting clients. Like we need to be, have more of a strategy in place um, than that, because I think a lot of times we are misguided to think that, oh, I started a business. I can just create a social media account or multiple social media accounts and I'm going to magically start posting and get clients. And that's just not the way that it works. We need a full strategy in place to actually use social media as one part of your marketing strategy, but alone is not an effective marketing strategy. Okay. So do you want to use it? Why? or why not and being really intentional about this i think knowing that you can use it in a way that you want to use it um, and you can show up as yourself and you can be authentic is really really important um, so keep that in mind when you're asking yourself do i want to use social media why or why not okay the other thing is you can decide what platforms you're using. And I always recommend that if you are already on social media, that you stick to the platforms you're already using and you already know how to use and you're already comfortable using and where you already have people following you. Um, this makes much more sense than trying to start a totally new platform and having no idea how to use it, having no one following you there, then you're totally starting from scratch and you can do this, absolutely, especially if you aren't using any social media, if you do decide that you wanna use social media, but this is not gonna be the most effective way for you to use social media. It's much better if you already use an existing following um, because it will help you get momentum going really fast, going much quicker than if you're just like, I'm starting a totally new account and no one's following me there. I, I don't have any friends there. Um, then, if you are going to do that and you decide to use social media, it's going to be a much, much slower process, which is okay. And it's doable, but just knowing that. Okay. Also thinking about how do you want to show up? Do you like writing? Do you like doing videos? Do you like, um, what do you like doing? How do you enjoy communicating and interacting with people? That's something I want you to think about when you are deciding if you want to use social media or not. Okay. The other thing to look at is how it is going to fit into your marketing strategy. So I just told you social media alone, just using social media, just showing up and posting and thinking that it's going to build your audience and get you clients is not typically how it works. So when it comes to building an audience, we have to be doing something that is getting you out there in front of an existing audience. If I have a hundred friends on, on Facebook, and I go and I post on Facebook and I'm just like, I'm going to create, keep posting on Facebook. Those same hundred, not even a hundred, the same, let's say like percentage of those people. So maybe five people out of the a hundred are going to be seeing my content. Okay. And if I just keep posting, then let's say five, maybe 10 people are seeing my content every day. How many clients do you think I'm going to get from doing that? And just because I'm posting on there does not mean that more people are going to see it than the potential 100 people that are following me, which means probably just like five people, I said, because <laughs> because social media is only going to show it to a percentage of the people who are following you. And typically it's a low percentage. So the only way to be getting it out there in front of more people using social media is if my friends are liking and commenting on it and then their friends are seeing it. Or if I happen to beat the algorithm in some way by trying to play the social media game, which means posting at certain times, posting certain types of content, all of that stuff, which would drive me crazy to try to get shown to new people. For most people, that's just not sustainable and it's not realistic. So it's just not a good marketing strategy, but then we need to have something else in place that's getting you out in front of new people and building that audience and 
building your audience on social media so that more people are seeing it. And that may mean doing things locally. It may mean having referral partners. It may mean getting on to podcasts or writing publications that get published somewhere where other people are seeing it. Okay. We need to get in front of other audiences, new people's audiences, and then we could invite them back to social media where they can follow us. And then the, the most effective way to use social media is to continue to build connections with those people. So to educate them, to connect with them, to even reach out to them and be like, Hey, I'm excited you're here. Like actually send someone a message and connect with them in that way. Um, I'm not saying to reach out to random people and send them messages. I personally hate that. So I would not do that to other people, but if someone follows me, right? Like they have found me some way and they followed me, then yes, reach out and send them a message because they have taken the initiative to follow you. So we need a way to get you out there and build the audience. And then you could have people follow you. Like I could even go and meet people in person somewhere. Maybe I go to a networking event or even I'm talking to someone in Starbucks and they're like, what do you do? And I strike up a conversation and then I'm like, Hey, like let's, you know, you could follow me on Instagram or let's follow each other on Instagram. And then that person's following me and I can build that connection with them through creating content, through maybe sending them a message, all those different things. Okay. So that's really how we want to be using social media in a way that is effective and that isn't going to drive you absolutely crazy by trying to beat the algorithm. Okay. Just not a sustainable, <laughs> a sustainable option for, I would say most people. Okay. The other thing that I really want you to keep in mind is that it is really important to build an email list. And if you are going to use social media, I would also build an email list. But if you aren't using social media, you could just build an email list. This way you're building a community that is location independent. And you're doing that through getting out in front of other people's audiences. And either you could invite people back to your email list where they can follow you and you can build those connections with them, or you can invite them back to social media and then hopefully get them onto your email list or invite them back to social media and your email list. But we ultimately want to have an email list, whether you were using social media or not, because you do not own your audience on social media. So let's say something would happen to your Facebook account or your Instagram account. Maybe it gets shut down. Maybe you get locked out. Maybe it gets wiped out. You know, you never know, like this doesn't happen frequently, but it can happen. Um, or, Facebook went under or something. Like I said, these things aren't likely, but they can happen. We don't own our audience somewhere. So it could just get wiped out and be gone at any time. You do own your audience on your email list. So you want to always be getting people back to your email list as well. And like I said, you could use your email list plus social media to grow those connections with people because some people aren't really social media people and they they read emails, but some people aren't really email people and maybe they see you more on social media, but maybe you decide you don't want to use social media, then you could just use the email list. And otherwise, like I said, you want to, you want to have both. Like you always want to have the email list, whether you're using social media or not, like that is a decision you can make, but it's not required to use social media. Okay. So I always, any sort of content I'm creating, I always share with my newsletter, um, with my email list. And then a lot of times I'll post about it on social media as well. So people have two places where they can potentially see it. Cause once again, I know some people are bigger into email and they're more likely to open their emails. Some people, you know, are on social media and they're more likely to see it on social media. So you can decide. Um, that's one thing you can keep in mind when you're deciding. Okay. When it comes to what to be sharing on social media, because I think this is where a lot of people get stuck as well. They're like, what do I talk about? What do I share? It's all been done before. I don't have anything unique, anything different to be sharing. Everyone's already talked about it. Like, are you feeling that way? <laughs> okay, this is what I want you to know. It has all been talked about. And so many people are talking about the same thing. And that is totally okay, because we're all helping people with similar things, but it's going to be different from you. 
because it is coming from your perspective. It probably will include some of your story and your experiences in the content that you are sharing. And this is what you really want to do to be able to stand out and build good good connections with people. You don't want to just be really boring and just sharing educational content. You really want to share about why would your ideal client care about those topics? How is it relatable to them? And also how is it relatable to you and your story and your experiences? Okay. I want you to think about like, especially now we have, we have AI, we have chat GBT. You can just type, you can just say, Hey, write me a post about whatever, you know, like, and use, you can use AI artificial intelligence in that way to create content. So if you aren't putting you behind your content, your personality, your story, your stuff could sound exactly the same as everyone else's. And this is why you really want to bring all of this into your content. And when I'm thinking about what to share, I'm always thinking about, I want to teach. I want to inspire. I want to share my wisdom. I want to share my story. Those are really the things that I'm bringing into my content. And I'm not so much creating content to try to entertain people. I have more of like the teaching part behind it. Like that's what I enjoy more. Like I'm, I'm not really big on like creating reels and like dancing around and pointing at things. And like, I don't like creating content that's complicated to create. Like I like keeping my editing very, very simple. Um, I like doing longer form content. Um, that's just what I enjoy doing. So I, think about this when I'm deciding how I'm going to use social media and where I'm going to show up. Um, the other thing I want to say about that too, is I do a lot with YouTube, which is kind of social media, but it feels very different to me. Like I don't get on YouTube and just like start scrolling. Like I never do that. And so I know I'm not going to fall into that trap when I'm using it. I usually just use it to post my content. And if I am using it, um, to look up content, I'm searching for something specific. I'm not kind of like following in that black hole. The other thing about YouTube is that my content there lives forever as far as it's just search engine. So people are coming across it maybe years after I create it because they're searching for specific content and it pops up. Okay. So it's very different than, um, social media such as like Facebook and Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or whatever it is, um, because there your content usually is very time sensitive and people aren't searching for content and finding it. It's just like they may see it, it may show up on their feed for a day or two or, you know, whatever. And then it's kind of gone. So that's something you can think about too, when you're thinking about like, how do I want to share content if I'm using, you know, a social platform? Um, the other thing I want to keep in want to remind you of or want you to think about when you're thinking about using social media is really putting in place um, ways to protect you and your energy if you are using social media. Uh, this is really, really, really important because once again, it can be hugely draining for those. It can be hugely draining for everyone, but it can especially draining for those of us who are highly sensitive and introverts because once again, it's just a lot of energy to be taking in. And the other thing that it can really do is it can kill your inspiration and your creativity because when we are consuming information, we are not leaving space for creativity. And a lot of times if we're taking in too many other people's ideas and too many other people's content and what they're doing, we aren't leaving space for creativity and our mind is so full of what everyone else is doing that it isn't able to come up with its own ideas. And so literally we can be squashing our own creativity by constantly consuming information, whether it's on podcasts, whether it's in videos, whether it's on social media, if you're taking in all that content, you're consuming, consuming, consuming. I want you to start thinking about instead leaving the space and for your creativity, it needs space. And it needs to not constantly be consuming other people's stuff because it just literally will not leave the space for your own creativity. Okay. I see this all the time. Like if you're looking at what too many other people are doing to try to create your own content, this is the worst thing to do. Don't look at what other people are doing. Allow it to just like come 
come through you, okay? <laughs> um, this is the best way to do creativity. The other thing is like putting in place, so for me, I have a timer as far as like on my phone, I can only be on social media for 30 minutes a day and then it cuts me off, okay? The other thing is, so I've really had to put these things in place for my, I'm using something called One Sec, I believe it is, One S-E-C, um, where when I do log into social media, it pops up and it makes me wait like a few seconds and then it says, do you want to continue to this app? And I put that in place for me too, so that I don't unconsciously like open it when I get stuck or bored or, you know, whatever. Like I'm like, oh, do I want to be on Instagram right now? Do I want to be on Facebook right now? Or am I just opening it just to open it? Like I have to stop and, and think about it. The other thing is I really went through and I unfollowed tons of people. I do not follow any other coaches, any other business coaches, since that's what I'm doing, because I don't want to see what other people are doing because I want to come up with my own ideas. I want to come up, I want the space for my creativity. And so unfollow anyone who is triggering to you, who is doing the same thing as you, any of that stuff so that you aren't squelching, squenching, whatever the word is, squashing your own creativity. So be really aware of this unfollow anything that's triggering to you anything that puts you in the um comparison mode like any of those things you protect your energy you decide what you take into your brain um be very mindful and very very intentional about this okay so i'd love to hear from you below after hearing all of this does this help you a little bit as far as trying to decide do you want to use social media in your business or not? And I'd love to hear from you. Do you use it or do you want to use it or not? Let me know why in the comments. And I want to thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you are interested in working together, this is something that we talk about a lot. I help you personally come up with your own individual marketing plan. It is not based on what anyone else is doing. It's based on what is best for you when it comes to marketing your business. This is based on your ideal client, your skills, your strengths, and what you want to be doing and where you want to be spending your time. Uh, this is really, really important. So if you want help with figuring that out, um, I will put the link below this video for the application for us to work together. Go ahead and check that out. I have more information about my program there. Um, and then we always set up a time to chat together when it comes to working together to make sure it's a good fit. So if you're interested, go and check that out. And I want to thank you for joining me in this week's video. I will see you next time.